Chapter 104 of Chainsaw Man. You know that Tatsuki Fujimoto likes to move at 4th Hokage level speeds for the pace of his manga, and I've really felt that these last couple chapters of Chainsaw Man, and the information which we developed last chapter in 103, the current mindset of Denji, the way he's going to be acting throughout this manga, and the way that we foreshadowed the way he's going to behave during today's chapter, the spoiler, was super interesting. Denji obviously felt disinterested or indifferent to what Yoshida was telling him last chapter. He wants to be the big figure, he wants to be the chainsaw man, the hero of hell, that individual who the public is looking at in this sort of grandiose way, and this figure that's bigger than life. And Yoshida was trying to take that away from him, and all of the demands which Yoshida was giving to them, we get to see Denji quite literally be defiant against it. He was saying that I'm going to take away the cake if you don't listen to my commands, I'm going to take away the rest of the food, and what Dingy did, even whenever he started to take away things from him, was still ate that cake, was still took control of his own life. He went out there and started grabbing the cake, eating it, because he's going to make sure that people know he's the chainsaw man. And that literally happened during this chapter, and I just wanted to mention that because it's one of those ways that Tatsuki Fujimoto takes this metaphorical sense of what's going on and quite literally implants it into the story. But to start off, we pan to Yoru. She's having her first teenage freakout as this sisterly conversation ensues, which informs us finally as to the exact reason why Yoru has a sort of hate for the Chainsaw Man. As alluded to by Makima in Chainsaw Man Part 1, Chainsaw Man was the slayer of the War Devil. They fought, however, no matter how many times Yoru killed him, he kept getting back up. Next thing she knew, she was getting eaten by him, only parts of her body though, and it only weakened her, not taking her out of the world completely. This is the reason for the lack of wars in the world after THE World War. Once again, relating back to what Makima said about the group which shall not be named, and World War II not existing in this current timeline. And since there's been no wars, nobody's fearing the concept of them. And that means that people are starting to forget that concept, and Yoru is scared that she's actually going to be forgotten in the midst of all this. Chainsaw Man's the only person to blame for this. But Asa's like, dang, that's my sister, that's my girl, and she's about to speak up to her, have this little sisterly bedtime conversation. However, Tatsuki Fujimoto says, no, we don't got time for the cute shit, you girls need to rest up and get your energy. They fall asleep, Yoru first, and then Asa falls asleep, actually thinking about the fact that she's happy to be alive now. She's happy that she had a change of outlook, and the only person she has to thank for that is Chainsaw Man. And it's cool to see this differing ideology towards Chainsaw Man. She's now neutral to him, whereas uh, Yoru still hates the dude. However, now we're off to school, and like I said, it's no surprise what occurred here. However, I think it's really funny that Dingy came to school on some of the weirdest attitude I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> We first see him and a woman is sitting on top of him, joking around with her friend, and everybody's just like, at least I'm thinking, what the hell is going on right here? I was cracking up. And then Yoshida calls Denji over and she's like, bro, you know, what's what's good? Why are you being a simp? <laughs> and Denji says it's all for the money. However, I know as well as Yoshida and I think the rest of you as well, that's a, a little bit of a front. Both of these characters are putting up a front though because that's not the true reason Yoshida to call Denji over. Yoshida reaches out to Denji and says, hey, take your ID back. I know that you purposely left this back at the scene trying to expose your identity. And it's just going to show that Yoshida's gonna have a hard time trying to corral this person. Denji is continuously, even since before the last instance, you know, the cake situation, just been trying to do everything in his power to expose his own identity as the chainsaw and everything other than just going on camera and going <laughs> but Yoshida finally tells Denji I will even hold you back by force if necessary and I'm kind of laughing here because you know I know you're the father figure right now and okay papa I'm sorry I'll stay good but brother you're talking to the hero of hell it's not that simple but Denji's back on his weird shit and apparently it may have been partially for the money actually because Yoshida pays him 10,000 yen and he accepts his offer of letting uh, you know Yoshida sit on Denji's back even though Denji said I'm only doing it for the chicas, apparently he's just a grimy dude for the dollar. And although I think this is just some sort of power play for Yoshida, showing him that, you know, I can buy you off, I can give you the food, I can do everything in my power to make sure that you don't do this, Denji tells him again, I'm not gonna cave into you, bro. 
I will expose my identity by any means necessary. And this is where I was 100% correct in my last video. I thought that one of the possible routes we could be taking is that Denji just wants a girlfriend, which is obvious, and that Yoshida, being the suave Sito individual he is, may have, you know, a way to get that girlfriend. And it's not like he's gonna procure something, you know, this isn't a one of those mangas he's just gonna introduce her to somebody and that person is somebody who fits denji's type and you know yoshida asks him what is your type then and denji just says i want somebody who's desperate and i think we all know one woman who's seemingly at the moment pretty desperate for a boyfriend up on the rooftop, Denji's introduced to Asa Mitaka, Yoru Devor Devel. And the beginning of this conversation is very interesting to me. Yoshida did one thing that just made me think that like this dude might know something about this girl. The fact that he knew that she was up on the rooftop right then, unless it's widespread knowledge that Asa Mitaka eats up on the rooftop and he knew to go check for her up there, or if he had some sort of stranglehold over the school just because you know he is Denji's protector. He might know where most people are at all times of the day, even the people were a little bit more hidden than others. I thought it was just very interesting that he knew the one person we needed to know and he'd already had an odd interaction with her beforehand. He knew where she was at, but I don't think he would really introduce him to her if he thought that she was a danger. However, this could even be a way to scope out what the danger truly is. However, I don't know. That's just a theory. A film theory. My nigga Yoshida throws my boy Denji the oop. He tries to, hey, you know whenever you're hanging out with the homies, you got a chick you're trying to talk to, and your boy is like, bro, you know Miles? Miles makes $100,000 a year. Did you hear that, Jessica? Sorry, I didn't mean for you to hear that. It's like that. <laughs> he's like, yeah, so like, you, you got saved by the chainsaw man, right? And then he's like, time to pounce, time to pounce. She's like, yeah, pretty much. However, Denji's like, I'm a Chainsaw Man fan, and just kind of blows it for a second. I was like, Denji, come on, you gotta come harder than that. However, he catches himself, and this is an interesting conversation we have. When asking whether she likes the Chainsaw Man or not, Asa just answers that it's kind of a neutral figure within her life. She doesn't like his filth, she doesn't like the fact that he acts like an idiot, and she doesn't like the fact that he gets no hoes. And Denji tries to retort all of these. He's like, come on, no, he's a good guy. He's the got the gabagool. However, he's just thinking within him what I'm thinking. Yeah, he's, Timothy, he's, yeah, he's, and Denji's gotta show the world that he's Himothy. And you know what he does? He says, I'm gonna exclaim this. Ah, I'm just gonna come out and say it. I'm finally gonna say it. That'll show you. And although Yoshida's like, hey, yo, bro, Calm down for a second. You can't stop the Chainsaw Man. Denji announces, I know, because I am the Chainsaw Man. And as he tries to explain, with no credibility behind his words, Asa just looks at him like, all right, loser, and storms off away from him. <laughs> Yoshida's like, yeah, that was kind of a folder. I don't know why you thought that she would believe you like that. Nobody would believe you like that. You know how many people run around saying, I'm Batman? Come on, dude. There's fake Drakes out here. There's fake Meek Mills. <laughs> Fake Michael Jackson's. I love him freaking LA, dude. This fake freaking. <laughs> oh my god, this is a beautiful chapter of Chainsaw Man. Tatsuki Fujimoto is just moving us at that Tatsuki Fujimoto pace right now. Like I was saying, it's crazy to think that chapter 98 is where we started. We're only, what, six chapters deep, and we are deep into this right now, dog. Seven chapters. However, it's been a beautiful seven chapters from the beginning, getting introduced to Asami Taka, having a pivotal moment come around, which kind of changed her outlook on life and changed the thought process of her compared to Yoru and the War Devil. That's the crazy part. The War Devil and her were kind of on the same terms in terms of like wanting to bop Chainsaw Man if need be, you know? She didn't want to be a part of the War Devil's crazy antics. However, she didn't like Chainsaw Man until recently. The Chainsaw Man showed her that she, she needed a will to live, and that kind of changed her from having a negative outlook on him to a neutral one. She probably would have been uh, less, less uh, pushbacky, for lack of better words, towards her plan than she's going to be now, just because she's like she didn't want to be involved, but now she really doesn't want to be involved. Like Chainsaw Man saved her life. So this is gonna be a crazy dynamic we see within Chainsaw Man Part Two. Told y'all, that uh, Yoshida was gonna be the dating coach because that's Suave Sito, like I said. However, I'm out of here. That's a little bit. <laughs>